Hey guys, this is Mac again. Uh, today I'm bringing you vlog number two. Today we're going to talk about optics for 3-Gun and how do you choose the right optic to go out and shoot in maybe your first 3-Gun competition or if, if the current optic that you're using is just really not working out for you. What other options do you have? So um, I've got a few options here today. I've actually been uh, trying some new things lately. Um, so got some some more examples of some different things to show you here today so um, let's talk about if you're thinking about going out and trying your first three gun competition uh, so um, you may not realize it yet or not but a lot of times the optic that you choose uh, depending on what kind of match you're going to shoot in is going to decide what division you're in um, you know when you first go out you probably didn't even know there were divisions in three gun but um, you, there are like three or four different divisions, and a lot of times your rifle optic uh, will place you into division. Now, the, the vast majority of people shoot TAC ops or tactical optics. Uh, this is usually consists of variable power scopes. Uh, probably the most common are the one to four power scopes. Now, one to six, and even like some one to eight power scopes are on the market. Uh, this is where the huge majority of shooters uh, and the ones that you see on TV on 3-Gun Nation, these are what these guys are shooting. Um, now when you're first starting out, let's just say you got your first AR-15 rifle and it's just a stock the way it came from the factory Colt 6920 with iron sights. Go out and shoot your first competition with iron sights. You'll be in the iron sights division or TAC irons. Um, there won't be many shooters in your division, so you, if you are shooting at a match with a prize table, you stand a pretty good chance of getting a good prize. Um, but the most important thing, is, and the, actually the, the big theme that I want to get out of this video, is don't let lack of equipment or lack of a certain optic prevent you from going out and shooting. Go out and shoot with, with irons your first match. Um, you're going to get more experience from shooting the match um, than by sitting at home and ordering, you know, some $500 red dot sight or scope off the internet and waiting on it to come in. So, you know, very simply, um, let's just look at the backup, the backup iron sights on this Mark 18 rifle. These are Daniel Defense um, fixed backup irons, and um, you know, if this uh, aim point red dot was not on this rifle. Now I can still go out and shoot a match with this rifle just by using the irons. You know, they're coarse, um, you know, enlisted military people, you know, they have to qualify using uh, iron sights, you know, out to great distances. So it can be done. But when you're start, first starting out, I, you know, I will have to say honestly that iron sights are not going to be the best for shooting, you know, long range targets. Sometimes you're shooting steel targets that may be six or eight inches at three or four hundred yards, and you may have issue with that. So, um, so that's something to consider if you're starting out with irons. Um, you want to get a good zero on them. You want to know where that zero is. You know, if it, is it 50 yard zero? Is it 100 yard zero? You got to know what your trajectories are um, at different distances and know what your hold offs will be. And hold-offs, especially when you have to hold above the target, are a little more difficult with iron sights just simply because the post is there and it's going to obscure your target. So one option, cheapest option, most of the time already on the rifle, tack irons. Next step up and what a lot of first-timers coming out to competition will be shooting, and that's red dot. Um, most common red dots... Um, you see names like Aimpoint. Uh, this is an Aimpoint T1. Uh, I took this off of another rifle, but I shoot this in competition when I want to stay in the uh, um, TAC iron. 1X red dots is still considered TAC irons. So if I want to stay in TAC irons, I shoot 1X red dot, and usually it's this Aimpoint T1. Uh, the one that was on this Mark 18 is an H1. Um, both of these have two MOA dots, and they are really, really good for precise shooting. Uh, now, the advantage of red dot is that faster target acquisition. It, it's a really fast sight. I mean, when you throw the rifle up and you keep both eyes open, right, um, which is the difference between irons 
and red dots. A lot of times with irons, you're going to have to close one eye and able to, to see through the rear peep. With red dot, you're keeping both eyes open. That lets you get good depth perception on targets and also lets you see the entire range so that you can move and transition between targets. And a really good, crisp, and high-quality red dot is going to be one of the quickest optics that you can use in competition. Um, I really like the aim points and I really like the ones with the two MOA dots because at 100, 200, 300 yards I can still get good precision out of my rifle you know because if my target's eight inches at 400 yards that two MOA dot is essentially the same size as that eight inch plate so it's not covering up my target I can still see the plate and um, I don't have to worry about you know dot being too big or not being able to see the target and you know wasting tons and tons of time shooting a target I can't see so um, if you're just starting out and all you have is a red dot on your rifle go out and shoot um, you're gonna have a lot of fun shooting red dot uh, in three gun competition now another option for red dots uh, this is an EOTech and this is an EOTech uh, EXP EXPS2 um, actually and I'm still trying this out and I really like this sight um, now just quickly some differences between um, aim points and EOTEX uh, there's a little bit of a price difference uh, you're gonna spend a little bit more for an aim point um, and when I say spend a little bit more I mean both of these are like between four and six hundred dollar optics and that's without the mount mm -hmm. um, you're also gonna have to spend you know, a fair chunk of change on a good, reliable mount. Um, EOTEX, I find, uh, because of the wide field of view, you got a big square uh, field of view, uh, I, I find that I can see a little bit better with that optic. I can acquire the target a little bit faster and also has a 1 MOA center dot with a 65 MOA outer circle, which I don't really, you know, use that much. But, but you got a finer center dot, um, Quicker target acquisition, you know, maybe a fraction of a second than the aim point, and wider field of view. Downside of the EOTech is battery life. So with my aim points, I leave them on all the time. They've got like five, six year battery lives. So uh, even in the safe, the uh, the optic stays on. Now with the EOTech, I don't do that. Uh, battery life there is like in the in the term of like maybe 600 hours or so. So I had to turn that one off, and if you forget and leave it on, you may show up to a match with a dead battery. So that's one thing you gotta uh, keep in mind. Um, only downside, I guess, between these two with the aim point versus the EOTech is the aim point costs more, and also it's a smaller sight, and there's, um, you know, the the metal housing around the actual circle of the glass, so that could potentially sort of obscure part of your. Uh, Part of your field of view you know that the EOTech is just wide open it's like looking through a TV screen it's so wide so so each of those has its pluses and minuses you know and um, that's what a lot of first-time or, or new shooters that I've seen out in competition come out there with you know like an Aimpoint M2 M3 uh, T1 H1 um, the new Aimpoint Pro is one of the best affordable um, and high quality optics that you can get for the price. It's about a $400 optic. But there's a lot of EOTechs out there, and, and they're really good sites too, mm -hmm. so don't, don't discount them. Okay, now let's talk about the meat and potatoes, and that's scopes. Uh, one to four power scopes, this is what most guys are shooting. This puts you in TAC Ops, um, and this is, where, this is where the pros live. So bring your big boy pants when you start bringing the scope to the match. Uh, this is a Burris uh, XTR. I've been shooting this a while. Um, as you can see, I also have an MGM switch view lever on it. So that's another thing. When you're talking about variable power optics, you got to be able to spin that tube uh, fast uh, because you're on the timer. So these switch view levers, as you can tell, allow you to switch powers really quickly. Um, also, you want to talk about a really high quality mount. And in my opinion, there really are only I guess three that I would trust my life to. Um, I like quick detach mounts because as I've said before I like to switch between classes, switch between optics. So what what you have here is a LaRue. This is a LT-104 um, scope mount, quick detach, um, and I use this a lot. Also um, 
uh, American Defense ADM makes really high quality mounts and then the third one is Bogro. So one of those three is what you'll see me running and those are the three that I trust. Uh, you want something that repeats zero so when you take it off the rifle, put it back on, you're, you're not wasting tons of, uh, tons of ammo re-zeroing re your rifle. It goes right back to zero. Um, Here's another option. This is something that I've gone to now, and I'm going to be using this in competition going forward. This is a Trigicon TR24. This is a one to four power. Um, and the difference in this one, the great thing about it is no batteries, okay? Because it uses tritium, and it uses natural light to draw light through the tritium, and, and it glows. So you're never going to have to worry about battery life on this. This is one to four power, and it's got a center triangle, uh, which some people might think is a very, not a very precise way of shooting, but if you know how to use that triangle, this is a really precise scope. Um, I don't see tons of people using that in competition, but uh, my best buddy Jared uses that and just wipes the floor with me most of the time, so um, I'm getting on board and I'm, I'm trying it out. So there are a lot of other really good and high quality one to four and one to six power scopes nowadays. Vortex makes really good scopes. Um, Burris, uh, Bushnell, um, Primary Arms has a new fairly inexpensive 1 to 6 power scope. And then when you really want to talk about spending money in the $1 to $2,000 ranges on glass, Swarovski, uh, Leopold, um, those are just a few. Uh, Vortex makes a really high quality, high price scope as well. So that's one area of your, or your setup, your glass, your optic that you're going to spend a lot of money. Um, but don't discount the mount and don't forget that switch view lever as well. Uh, then the last class, open class, basically anything goes. Uh, then what you're talking about is having a scope maybe on top of the rifle um, and then also maybe having a secondary red dot at 45 degrees. Um, that's permissible and open. Um, optics on shotguns, um, magazine fed shotguns, optic on handguns, those are all in open class. Less people shoot open class just because it's basically an equipment war. Um, but, you know, you could shoot standard shotgun setup, uh, standard handgun setup, and just be put in open simply because you have two optics on your rifle. So, something to consider. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. That's the wide range of, uh, of different optic options for three gun. Um, like I said, most people are going to start out simple with irons or red dot. Get out there to your first match. Get out there and participate. Look and see what other people are using. And shoot, you know, ask them if you can try out their rifle. You know, at the end of the day, if the stages are still set up and uh, RO doesn't mind if you run another stage with somebody else's equipment just to try it out, you know, ask. A lot of people do not mind at all. Um, you know, they're more than willing to help out, you know, let you try something out. So. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, this is a lot of uh, growing pains on my part because I can tell you I've gone through probably 10 or 15 optics. It seems like every time I go shoot a match I'm using a different optic. Um, but hopefully I've settled on one scope that I'm going to use for a while now and, and sometimes like I said float back and forth between irons and uh, tack ops by using red dot versus using a one to four scope. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, Hopefully you learned something from this video. You saw an optic maybe that you liked. Um, go out there, um, get in competition, hopefully shoot well, hopefully see something you like and save your pennies and, uh, and, and get a new optic that, you, that works for you and you like. So once again, this is Mac. This is vlog number two. How do I choose the best optic for me for three gun competition? If you like this video, please click the like button. If there's something that I missed here in this video, uh, please mention it in the comments below. Um, there's so many options, you know, for three gun optics that there's no way that I covered them all today. So I'm sure I forgot something. Please point it out if I did. I'd love to, you know, have a discussion about optics because um, everybody has their own opinion and really and truly there is no one best. So um, please like this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm doing a, at least one video a week now. I'm back on a good upload schedule. So once again, this is Mac. Be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.